time I hit the streets, at an early age, I was on my own, you know, so. I didn't start, I started doing a lot of writing when I was probably about 15, between the age of 15 and 17, I was in school, the only thing I liked was chorus and English pairs, because I like writing poetry. I started off writing poetry, I started writing poetry. something that rhymed was in me, you know, and, uh, I remember getting locked up at the age of 19. And there was this gentleman in there and I was expressing my poems for him. He said, man, you like to sing. You should try to take one of the poems that you write and turn it into music. So that's what I did. And then it's just, just a lot of thing after that, as well as the revolving door of prison. You know, 14 years in and out of prison. You know. one day, enough is enough. Oh yeah, enough was enough. And it wasn't too long. Well, when I was young, I was, you know, very impressionable at that age. I heard that, and then 
later on in life, I got into more like, you know, like Wu Tang Clan, Mob Deep, and more towards like where I'm from, you know, listening to artists is growing up with like fucking everybody from KRS One to people who actually did it out here before us, you know, like I was listening to them and I just got hooked got to hooked. it and I got hooked to the symphony, you know, the, the beat, the feeling that I got, the goosebumps I got from certain songs, being one of the only, you know, non-African American kids where I'm at, I'm the only, you know, light-skinned cat where I'm at and I just listened to the same thing, you're like, damn, I didn't even know that song, man, like, how do you know it word for word, like, and, you find and I was just hooked. Racism is an issue with you? Um, no, not, I mean, I grew up, my mom was, my mother was married to an African American for 10 years. Uh, I have a, I have a black stepbrother, stepsister currently, as it is right now, and my mom, she later on in life, she dated a Puerto Rican guy for another 10 years, so I've been, you know, <laughs> been around. <laughs> well, it just so happens that the cradle of civilization is in Africa, so just so you know, my nigga, my nigga, now, um, so you've got studios, production, because the banging is beat on this song. What is the title of the song? The song is 3 a.m. music. 3 a.m. music that I'm listening to at 5 p.m. Like it's 3 a.m. You guys totally watched your performance last night. Everybody was on stage. It was crazy. And I love that. The energy, the vibe you guys have you brought with the true essence of hip hop and RB. Shout out to our producer, Lance, by the way. Shout out, Lance. You got some stuff going on with these young men here. Yeah, and that's what we strive for. We strive for originality. I thank you, my baby. You have had a lot of adversity and you've overcome all of the odds. And what do you have to say to the young people that are coming up behind you in this game to try to, like, the message. Like, you guys, make sure you get the Do you guys find that this is something we can find and stand for? Because we really are kind of tired of just gun violence. Well, yeah, most definitely. We're all about, you know, we, even with our music, we're not about promoting violence at all. You know, it's, it's all serious. And, 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 and I stress you guys that come to my studio, originality. You know what I mean? What comes from your heart? When you write a song, make it real. Rap about things that other people are doing or it's glamour and all. Don't get caught up in that life. Keep real. Within yourself. You know what I mean? Because real music touches real people and it makes you do real things. It really does. I mean, I kept my music in for about 10 years, but I've been writing for a long time. You know, and I kept my music in for about 10 years and I was at a birthday party one night. And the next girlfriend told me, she said, hey, why don't you sing that song for me? And, um, I sang the song, it was a house full of women. And when I got through, it wasn't a dry tear, you know what I mean? Yeah. And this old woman came up to me and she says, what are you doing with your life? You know, she said, what are you doing with your life? And that's when it gave me, you know what I mean? It gave me the oomph to want to go out there and start recording because I really touched somebody. And I know that I can make a difference, you know what I mean? So, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's not real. What I'm saying is there's a lot of the artists out here that are making it. I mean, you listen to some songs that are ridiculous, like Superman, that whole and stuff like that. These guys are making a million dollars right, and that's not it's You know what I mean? I, I like to say, Children of my community who get on the buses, trains, disrespectful, 
22 year old who you guys may have seen around her at the end of her name. She's getting quite a buzz for the baby. We just recently acquired her on the label. I'm not an artist. Well, I'm not a recorded artist yet. But my my job is pretty much I'm the captain of the street promotions team. You see me every day. Chuck Platinum, so salute Chuck. We love you, Ma, Nova, or nothing. Um, we, we have a firm foundation. There are so many wonderful, talented people that have affected our lives. Um, with General being the main one. Now I'm going to ask you to give me two words to describe AD the general and, and your experiences with her, both of you, and... Groundbreaking. Wow. Can, can you look in the camera and say that? Groundbreaking. Can, can we give your word to AD? For AD, because she, you know, she, when her, we flew her regardless. She's done so much. I think what she's doing is just straight up, you know, beautiful, you know, real, real. I, 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 I told, you know, I, I just, you know, while we were sitting up here, you know, and, and, and I couldn't get into it because I was starting to get frustrated, you know, it's been a couple hours and stuff like that. I do apologize. And, and I didn't know that you guys, honestly, this is, okay, so this is how we do things elegantly, hood stop. When one can't make it, there's always one that is willing and able and riding for my general. So salute AD because when she inboxed me and said, hey, Zeno's here, and you know, they're all the way from, and you got it wrong as usual, poor the busiest bee in the hive. They not from where she said Mount Vernon, baby. They from way, way north. They they from what we like to call upstate. They from Buffalo, hell, hell that Dunkirk, Dunkirk, New York, Silver Creek. It's, it's New York in the building, but we represent upstate. the entire state. It, it don't just end and start in the Bronx. It, it, it's the home. This is hip hop. New York is hip hop. So at this point. What, what kind of positive effects would you say AD has had, if any? Like, because, you know, there are some people that really don't rock like that with Ella Gunn. And I don't know why, because her movement is so beneficial to all men. It was like this. I told her today. I, I sent her a text on the phone. And I told her she said she was in a conference call, so she couldn't speak to me. So I wanted to let her know. Like I said, I've been in this, this game for about... 20, 25 years, 39 years old. So I wanted to let her know that, you know, we're not just somebody that's coming up here to get a little bit of shine and it's not about the money and stuff like that. Her, what she's doing out here is the same thing I'm trying to do out there for my people and have been trying to do it for a long time, you know, but like, like you just got to say, you, you can't understand why so many other people wouldn't be there to support it's the same way, you know. I, I, I used to do everything. And I was hustling, I didn't care because I had the money to do everything. You know, so I did everything for everything. When that money wasn't there and I had to change my life, it wasn't that way. You know? So I had, to, I had to switch it up and be like, well, this is what we got to do. Then we got to do a fundraiser to raise the money to go do this. Then we got to do this. These are things that we got to do. We all got to chip in together. And, you asked me earlier if, if there was one thing that I could say to the youth that have an inspiration in music. If you have an inspiration in music, it's just like with anything in life. You got to surround yourself with people that love music like you love. You know what I mean? So that goes the next question. already answered. My next question was going to be, would you say you're in it for the money or you're in it for the love? Just told you himself, he's in for the love. The love, the loyalty, and the plain experience of anything that you do, music related, that furthers yourself and towards your ultimate goal, which was to try to reach. 
would anybody try to reach? I'm not saying that I want to be a mainstream artist or anything. Oh, we had that industry all day. I'll like, be happy like, <laughs> running through the game for years and being a legend like Jaden Kiss or like South B or somebody like that. Or like AD the General. Yeah, or AD the General, you know. Let Nas niggas to the death of us. Like, yeah. like this, this, this one thing that bothers me. Like, if you, if you really love, like, you had a, a lot of people there last night. There was a lot of people in the trial oh, sure. and a lot of people that talked a lot of good talk. Now, we come all the way, we come eight, nine miles, eight, nine hours away to drive up here. We don't want to just be sitting in a hotel up around Chinatown. We come here because we love music. And we want to get in the studio. I called, I, 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 we wanted to get in the studio. We called, we talked to people last night. Yo, listen, we got money, we want to get in the studio. Not because we need to get in the studio here, but we want the exposure, we want to let y'all hear what we're doing. Why won't you do you know what I mean? Jump on there and be like, yo, come on, let's get in the studio. That's because you, you, know? you talk to certain people. Yeah. So, I'm going to tell you why you're going to rock with Ellen and I'm loving that you're rocking with Ellen and I'm loving that you're rocking with Ellen. You want to know where to go to get any of that? We love to sing. And it's the truth. That's why. Because we only spit truth with Ellen and This is family here. AD knows everybody. Yeah. So, you want to get them connected? Less than a New York minute, salute the general and see what happens. And absolutely amazing. I am honored and I'm going home to get to know more about you. If you are familiar with me, you will know that your interview is going to be like you actually bought me bacon. And just so y'all know, bacon will get you the greatest interview every time. But I love the whole, like, Steve Morgan told me sunshine and down soon. So at this point, coming from one of our Kelly's freaking I would rather listen to your music than Black Panthers. So that should tell me something. It should tell everybody that R. Kelly really needs to get some milk for that cookie and stop looking at people's panties. Uh -huh. and, and you, R. Kelly, pick up c Note CD because, and give us names and where we can find you and you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Twitter, you can find us at gmail.com. Hit us up. And, and you know, Kali, same thing? Same thing, I'm all over the place. Type in Y U N G G U L L Y. You can find me up on any one of the multimedia sites. That's what's up, and then you. I'm just going to call you something. I'm just going to call you 5.0. You can be my GTL. 5.0? That's a raw ass name. 5.0 is a raw ass name. I like that. 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 I